Jesus name we pray. Amen. Welcome, Pastor. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. We thank God for that. So we continue with our series. And we are, today we are doing the last chapter on the Gospel of John. Gospel of John, uh, chapter 5. That's what we'll be looking at together. Gospel of John, chapter 5. That's what we are looking at together. But before you even read, uh, tell your neighbor you are precious. You're honored. And God loves you. They don't think so, by the way. So tell your other neighbor, if you have one, you're precious, you're honored, and God loves you. Praise the Lord. As we are just about to read the passage, media, you can be taking us there. But I want to make a comment before we go there. Um, something, looking back in history. Um, in 1978, there was a man called Jim Jones. And there was a mass suicide of 909 people. They used to go to a place called the People's Temple, and Jim Jones was their leader. And questions were asked, how can rational people die just like that? Then um, in the 1993, there was a, someone called David Koresh. And David Koresh had something called the Branch Davidians, and he had some teachings that he was teaching from the Bible. However, 83 members died in a raid by the FBI when they went to raid the place full of guns in that place. 1997, uh, you know, there was something called Heaven's Gate. And in this Heaven's Gate, they used to have some teachings that those people were being taught. And actually, there was very many of them were found dead one day because they had been taught that after committing suicide or whatever they did, they expect to be picked by a spacecraft, taken to an outer space, where they would presumably find eternal happiness. In Uganda, a few years ago, there was a man called Kibwetere. Now, Kibwetere had a cult that had a huge following, and they were meeting in a place. And a fire was set up, and a thousand people died, and he fled. He's still being sought. I don't know if they caught him yet so the question has always been how would a rational person follow someone who leads them to die follow someone who misguides them uh right here in kenya a few years ago in a place i think in kinango there were people who were wearing masks do you remember gas masks because they had been told that the world was coming to anyone who saw that on tv and they were digging isn't it underground and in caves has the world ended has the world ended we are still here isn't it and people keep asking how would one be so deceived as to do that one time i went for some training in a certain country and when i landed we went in for the training and i think i was the only kenyan in that training and there were other people from other nationalities and that morning there was a story about a preacher imagine a preacher deacon joram that he was spraying people with doom to get healed. You come, ah, whee, he, ah, whee, that he was supposed to be healed. And then they say there was another one in another province who actually got people to eat grass. Now, for once, I was very embarrassed being a pastor. Now, it was not a pastor's conference. It was a leadership training. And so for that day, I never said I'm a pastor. I said, I love God. Because I don't want to be associated with what? With that. Not very far from here, somewhere in western Kenya, there's a man who, pro who claimed he's Jehovah. Did you remember that guy? Jehovah? Onyonyi. Then we were, told he, by, we, are, we were told that he disappeared. Do you remember that part? And then people said he died. But I disagree. Because God cannot, he went to be with himself. And there were angels. Did you ever see the angels? with wooden swords, with long robes, marching around the compound of Jehovah, Wanyonyi, guarding the gates. And people followed. And people keep asking, how would a rational man or a rational woman follow such a person? In fact, lately I hear there are people who sell oil. And you buy 100 bob, 500 bob, 1,000 bob, you pay. I even hear they sell brooms. You go, you sweep your house. Satan, talk. Satan. And you know you're busy sweeping. 
Because the devil has to be swept out of the house. And they are making a fortune. And somebody then asks, how would anyone rational buy a broom for sweeping the devil out of the house? These are questions we are contending with today. And we find that as we keep asking these questions, false teachers have not started now. Even during the times of John, there were false teachers. Even during the times of Jesus, there were false teachers. The biggest question is, do people have the grace to discern truth from falsehood? Can people tell this is a truth and this is a lie? And that's why John, in 1 John, wrote this account. He wrote to believers. In this account, he talks about those who were with us, but they are no longer with us. There are people who were with them, but they left them. And they started following other teachings. And we've been going through this series because it's important to ask ourselves, how can we tell truth from lie? The word of God from a fallacy. The living God from other gods. And that's what John is contending with. And that's why he's writing to believers. He's not writing to non-believers. He's writing to believers. Because they were false teachers. And they were false teachings. As I said last Sunday, the preacher of the word must be consistent with the word he's preaching. I repeat. The preacher of the word must be consistent with the word he's preaching. That's why they talk about preaching, preaching water and drinking. That is wrong. If you preach water, you drink. If you preach wine, you drink. <laughs> I think. That is consistency, isn't it? There has to be a consistency. There must be a consistency. And so today, we'll be taking, looking through chapter 5, and we'll be exploring together, as we are summarizing what we've been learning together, about designing grace. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives you that grace to discern. He gives you the grace to discern. On our own, we may not be able to, but with the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able. Remember, the scripture tells us that in the last days, that, you know, that it might be, even the elect might be what? Deceived. It will take God for even the elect not to be deceived. So let's go to 1 John 5 and read it together. Then we explore a few principles as we conclude this series. Uh, 1 John 5 verse 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Tell your neighbor, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Then Bible says, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Verse 8. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. He who believes in the son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. We need to read this together. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. 
He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Verse 13 says, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Verse 14, Now this is the confidence that we have in him. Now, now we need to read this together, verse 14. Let's go. Now this is a confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. I continue, verse 16. If anyone sees his brother sinning, a sin that which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death there is sin leading to death i do not say that he should pray about that all unrighteousness is sin and there is sin not leading to death now we know that whoever is born of god does not sin but he who has been born of god keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him we know that we are of god and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, this is a true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Dear Lord, as we explore a little deeper into your word, help us to have a discerning grace. May your grace, O Lord, be upon us, telling truth from lie telling your will and what is not your will. In Jesus' name we pray. There is so much deception that even those who believe sometimes stumble. If something is taught over and over again, people can easily believe a lie. If it's said over and over, Again, for example, have you ever heard people say, the Bible says, God who helps those who help themselves. Have you ever heard that? But has, you, has anyone ever showed you that verse in the Bible? Hello? I have heard it, heard it cited. God helps those who help. In people even add, it is, it is written. God helps those who help. The, until you ask someone, show me the verse, and then they say, eco uh, daniya Bible. Don't tell him, Haya, nionyeshe. Mimi nebo kuambia iko dania. Haya, iko wapi. Because it's been repeated so many times. We have heard it so many times. We even think it's a truth. Now, of course we know God helps people, isn't it? That's a truth. But does it say he helps those who help themselves? The Bible doesn't say that. So we find sometimes something can be peddled as a truth. But it's not truthful. Peddled is a what? But it's not truthful. And so we really need to ask ourselves, how do we tell, how do we discern what is of God and what is not of God? And God helps us in this. And so as we summarize on this series, I want us to look at the first principle, which we've looked at before, but now we are recapping. I tell your neighbor, those who are born of God, don't hate others but love them. We find scripture tells us in first john actually i was looking the other day um at the, go at the gospel of john he talks about love 57 times gospel of john 57 now would you believe in john first john five chapters he has talked about love 46 times have you noticed we've always been talking about love every sunday we've been talking about because john talk so much about love and, and 46 times in only 5 chapters and so we are told 1 John 2 9 whoever says he's in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness 1 John 3 14 we know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers whoever does not love abides in death it's hypocrisy to say I love God and not love Pastor Peter. It's not being truthful, saying, I love God, and not love my neighbor. It, 
be, not being truthful because how can I love God who I can't see? Yet I cannot love my brother who I, I see. Those who've reached the fourth floor, um, if you don't understand fourth floor, is who've hit 40. And those who've reach, hit the fifth floor, we all know it's a season when our parents need more attention. Have you noticed? If you hit fourth floor, if you're not in fourth floor, you have no idea what you're talking about. One day you will know. But for some of us who've hit fourth floor, and some of us hitting fifth floor, uh, fifth floor is hitting 50. We know our parents need a little more attention, isn't it? And so, how could we be such great servants of the living God without making time for them? Without calling them? Without occasionally visiting with them? Without finding out how they're doing? Because we may reach everyone else except our own. Now, that is not the gospel. That's not the gospel. Because we are being reminded here about loving. In fact, scripture tells us he, whoever doesn't take care of his, of his you know, immediate family, I'm paraphrasing, is worse off than an infidel. That's what scripture says. There's an expectation that if I really love God, I must also love other people. And we begin with our very own. We begin with our very own. I was told a story the other day, actually I think last week, about a lady. A lady who got a call from God. She got a call. A special call. When she got this call, she left everything. She left her husband. She left her children. She left her neighbors. And she went on mission. Sasa yeye amesema ameitwa. Na ile ile mwitu ameitwa nayo. Lazima aitike. Sasa ameitika. Now, the little children who are little going to kindergarten, they're asking where is mom? Mom cannot be reached. She claims that God has called her to go out into the world and preach the gospel. Now, according to me, I don't think it's God who called her. I think it's another God that called her. Because the God we worship cares about family. Hallelujah. The God we worship cares about children. The God we worship cares about spouses. Now, if you're going to for a prayer retreat, that's a great thing. Hallelujah. For a few days a week, maybe two, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with going to the mountaintop. But when we're talking about months on end, because you're going to seek God, that is not the God John is talking about. Our God is a God of order. Our God is a consistent God. Hallelujah. We can, as we go to reach out to other people, we still have a duty to reach out to our very own. Told a story one time about a pastor who was a great pastor. He used to preach powerful messages. He had a thousand thousands of people worshiping in his congregation. But then one day his wife came to church. And uh, she came, she used to come, sit service, but then at one time she stopped coming to church completely. Uh, people wondering, where is Mama? He used to say she's at the mountain. So this day, she came to church with a mattress. She rolled a mattress, put it in the back of the car, came, and then she put it at the back. In the big 2,000-seater sanctuary, she put that mattress, Pale Nyuma. So after service, she slept there. And she refused to leave church. So he asked her, why don't you want to go home? She said, you know, I discovered there's so much love in church where you are with these other people, and there is no, it's not at home. So I decided... Let me come here and enjoy that love. So I'm not going. So the elders came trying to convince her. She refused. She said, I want to experience the love here. Because at home I never get it. So he was busy sharing with everybody else. Except his own household. We are called to minister to our own. Praise the Lord. We are called to love our own. We are called to care for our own. They are not perfect. In fact... Because they know us very well. They know how to make us angry. Hallelujah. Nobody knows. But guess what? But the greatest message of love comes from this brother, isn't it? We, there are people who hurt us most. Our brothers. You know the brothers we grew up with? Eh, who really knows you? And they know how to annoy you. Eh? Even that cousin of yours who knows how to call you for money. You just see the phone. You just know it's about money. Then they start by praising you. You know. 
Yeah. Nasikia huduma yako inavuma kabisa. Na wanakuweka wanza juu. Hey. Nasikia unahubiri vizuri sana. Hey, watu wanaokoka. Haleluya, mnapiga harudia kadhaa. Alafu unakoja tunambua eh, na sasa <laughs> nataka giri moja. You, you can tell where he's going. Alikuwa anakuweka juu. Eh? Then he goes where? Imagine you've been called to love that one. Praise the Lord. We are called to love. We are called to love. Those who are born of God don't hate others, but they love them. But they love them. So real love is shown by a desire and concern to do God's will. Because God calls us to love. And John has persistently talked about us loving one another. One of the greatest demonstrations of love was Jesus and, the, and how he took care of people. He looked at the people and they were hungry. Remember, he had compassion on them. And he cared for them. We have to love one another. We cannot love God who we can't see. And yet we can't love our fellow man. So tell your neighbor, those who are born of God, don't hate others, but love them. But then secondly, tell your neighbor, those who are born of God, possess the spirit of God. Now we find that in 1 John 3, 24, by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. The Holy Spirit is the spirit God has given us. Whoever is in him has the spirit of God. 1 John 4, 13, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. The spirit of God is in us the spirit of truth hallelujah the spirit of love glory and that spirit is in us it's in us now john writes here because there were some heretics uh, so just like we have heretics today even then there were heretics and those heretics had a very interesting teaching they said you know jesus that's what they told people they said that he jesus uh jesus was jesus and then when he went to be baptized that's what they were saying at he, he 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 suddenly became divine when god said that's my son in him i'm well that's my son and in him i'm well pleased and he then he received his divinity at that point but when he was about to go to the cross at that divinity left so they were saying for the baptism yes for the death of the cross no are you seeing false teaching there false teaching there and so he had to insist and say that John emphasized water baptism for Jesus and blood, de blood death on the cross. That's why I'm talking about the water and the, and the blood. You see, the Holy Spirit testifies. That's what he's talking about. Jesus said to him, remember a little earlier, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's only through Christ who was, who, who, who was baptized as a demonstration. He died and rose again. So we find that there is a witness within us. And that's by the Holy Spirit. So the witness of the Spirit is a witness to the believer's own spirit. We find that the Holy Spirit gives us a witness of who, of who Christ is. Nobody gets born again on their own accord. It takes the Holy Spirit of God to convict men of judgment and unrighteousness. Everyone born again will tell you what convicted them. Praise Jesus. If you sit with everyone, they'll tell you, for me, this is what convicted me. The Holy Spirit has a witness in you. When I got born again when I was 15, and uh, I went to this church, very nice Pentecostal church, Crisco actually. And uh, when I went there, we used to go there and they used to have very nice preachings. And then uh, I went to receive Jesus. And, and what really convicted me was a verse in Isaiah that says, For all your good works are like filthy rags. You know, that's a very painful thing to tell a teenager, by the way. You've been trying to be so good, then you're told all your good works are like filthy rags. And that word ate me up. It used to eat me up, that word. Because you're trying to be good. I was a firstborn, and I had one brother who was my follower, uh, who was a very interesting guy. Someone was in high school with him, and he knows himself. Now, this friend of yours was very interesting. I mean, he was cheeky like no one's business. So I tried to be as good as I could. But the amazing thing is that and when I realized I can never measure to God's goodness. I can never, never measure to God's righteousness. That ate me up. And that's the day I received Jesus Christ as a 15-year-old. And I went forward with my afro, hallelujah, bright eyes, skinny, looking in front. And the guy, he had very huge hands. He put the hands on my head. So I loved the gospel, the salvation, but I didn't like the way he did it. 
because after putting his hand on my head when I left it's like I had a kipara because all my hair was flat in the front and has holes because of his big fingers so I went to the washroom and I tried to pull it up and I looked like Scooby Doo you know I mean I didn't like that maybe that's why I left and anyway, I'm joking but there's always something there's a witness of the Holy Spirit in us and that is what convicts us praise the Lord and what speaks to you is not what speaks to me what brought you to the kingdom may not be what brought somebody else to the kingdom because the Holy Spirit has a witness with your spirit hallelujah and that's what scripture is telling us the witness of the spirit is a witness to the believers own spirit remember you have a spirit a soul and a body now we all know about the body but you see your spirit has three faculties actually it has conscience it has intuition and communion and that's why you commune with god through your spirit that's how you commune with god through your spirit and, and, and intuition you're able to tell there's stuff you can just tell that i'm not going to leave now something tells you you don't it's not you telling yourself deep within your spirit god speaks to you hallelujah through your spirit and there's a witness right there and then you have your soul your mind your intellect your willpower your emotions and desires and we express ourselves through that we express ourselves through that and we are finding of course then the body is what manifests whatever came from the spirit into your soul and then your body and people can see whoa we can see this that's why jesus said from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks here the heart is not referring to the physical heart to your spirit from the abundance of the heart so it's only what is inside what has it was in my earlier years uh, we used to have Kenya bus and um, one day we we're going for a function and there were several of us and we we're very smart but there was this lady who was dressed in white white shoes white dress everything was white and she looked very smart so we all got to the bus she was coming for the wedding also but now in those days not everyone used to sit people used to sit and other people used to stand and there were no michuki rules so we all used to stand. if you stand you you know you stand you pay so this lady i remember then mama mboka came in from marigiti and she and it had rained she had this big 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 basket you know with a strap on her head and big one and it was very wet because it had doma now you know doma comes from the ground hallelujah and guashe comes from the ground with red soil but my teacher said red soil so it had red soil inside so red soil mixed with doma and guashe inside she's carrying it and it's very heavy and i could tell Aki she's going to sell it in another market so she suddenly comes inside the bus and when she's too to stabilize it started moving right and left now this sister in christ dressed in white had no idea until she looked and saw it swinging like a pendulum to her side where before she could finish it smacked her on one side and there was a nice patch of brown and red soil on her so in trying to move to the other side it moved to the other side and also hit her let me tell you friends this sister in christ what she leered words she called her animals that uh, birds that fly in the air fish in the sea the ones in the compound the back woo woo i mean she called her all kind of things suddenly what was in her came out she even called her one of the clothing things that crawls you know the ones that crawl and you know the ones what which are funny colors imagine in a few minutes the words that had been uttered are can unutterable from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks i had animal names in a certain language that i've never heard before started in english swahili then she moved to mother tongue and she had to be cooled down because and the mama from the going from wasoko hana ubaya anasema anasema pole anasema pole ya nini anachiliwa zingine pole ni wewe you know <laughs> from the abundance of the heart from the abundance of the heart those who are born of god possess the spirit of 
And you know we get tested, isn't it? We always get tested. We always get tested. We always get tested. But the third thing I want us to note is those who are born of God have assurance of salvation. Now John is telling them about the assurance of salvation. Remember there are some people who left the faith. There are some people who followed the false teachers. And here he is and he's telling them they have assurance of salvation. Now if we find verse 11 and 12 and this is the media you can take us there. John 1, 1 John 5, 11 and 12. This is what you're finding and this is a testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He who has a son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Praise the Lord. Assurance of salvation. We have assurance of salvation. He's giving them that assurance. But then he goes on and tells us something. He talks to us a little bit later and talks about confidence and compassion in prayer. You know, he talks about now this is the confidence, verse 14, we ha that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. According to his will. So how do you discern his will? How can you tell, I am praying and I know beyond the shadow of doubt, this is the will of God. Let's explore that together. It's actually possible to pray and to know this is the will of God. Scripture tells us, and these are the, there are several markers actually. I'll give you six markers, six markers that you will use to tell that as I pray, I am praying in the will of God. Actually, there are seven markers. Uh, there are more than that, but I'm just giving you the few here. Mark 11.24, media takers there. Mark 11.24. And uh, in Mark 11.24, media is taking us there. We are told, therefore I say to you, Whatever things you ask when you pray, whatever things you, when you, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So the first thing is you must, they must be in faith. You must have faith. Because scripture tells us whatever is not of faith is sin. You know, I have struggled, brother Job, I've totally struggled with people, uh, um, you know, like today, we all came to church and we sat down. And you sat on that seat, but you never tested the seat. You never picked the seat upside down, shook it, tested its capacity. Can it carry me? You are 100 kgs. But you just sat, pap. You have faith in the chair that it will carry you. True? You never tested it. Really. You could have done a chair test. There's nothing like that, but you know, who knows? Yeah. No, when you go into a matatu and you're traveling, and I've gone into a matatu, I've seen people get into a matatu, someone goes in, and then you look at that driver and you see his hair. That hair of his, you see some fellows walking on it, and you discover that that hair and the comb and water are not related. It's like water and oil. Then you discover he's chewing something. This is just an example. And his teeth are green in color. You don't know what he's chewing. But then, halfway through, the just when he starts off, he has to put some psych and he gets something to smoke. Now, what he's trying to smoke is not the is not the Embassy Kings, which we tried to smoke when we were in high school and coughed as if we were dying, and that's the last time we attempted. No, he's not trying that one. I know the men are looking at me like a passy. No, I know. Some of you started straight smooth as M. We know you, at it because it had menthol, my friend. We know. We also tried. I attempted and I coughed. My eyes were bloodshot red. Yeah, I've been told that if you do this, you're a real man. Form two. I was trying to look for my real manhood. Anyway, that's for another day. Now, so you discover it's not one of those packs. This one is smelling like the one the boys who used to have trouble with the principal used to smoke behind the class. You remember those ones? The one they used to smoke in the evenings at between six and seven before supper. Unakumukao. Don't look like me as if you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking to the men in this place. We all know some of them used to do that. And suddenly that smell, you know it. Men know what I'm talking about. And let me tell you, when he removes it and starts smoking, then he looks extremely happy. 
and you are halfway through the highway and you tell him nalala unikumbushe ni tukifika my friend you have no idea who this character is but you sleep in that car you have faith in the driver but when we tell you to have faith in Jesus you have a problem <laughs> I'll not say praise the Lord because we should not praise the Lord for that the first thing is for to know you're praying according to the will of God is you must be in faith you must have faith but the second thing John 14:14 14, 14, if you ask anything in my name I will do it you're asking in his name you ask so the first thing is what tell your neighbor faith second one tell them tell your neighbor in his name but the third thing is John 15 7 he says John 15 7 says if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you now wait it's one thing to want something all right want it's another thing to need something let me tell you friends it's a totally different thing to desire something did you know if you have a family or if you your, your, your wife may know what you want your husband may even know what you need they have no idea what you desire true because desire is deep inside you scripture is telling us here that if you abide in me that is if you remain in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you so the third thing is abide in him so tell your neighbor faith tell them in his name remind them abide in him we are getting a guide isn't it how do we know that we are praying in the will of god fourth the, the other thing is media take us to mark 11 25 mark 11 25 it tells us and whenever you stand praying if you have anything against anyone forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses now one of the most difficult things is forgiving forgiving is very very difficult if you want to know how difficult it is experiment someone you care about especially it's a sister or a wife you know, yeah but then you know especially on the other gender uh, the other gender i think is even more difficult because then you discuss and you're told you're forgiven until three years later you do a wrong and unakumbushwa unakumbuka ile ehe na hiyo na ile na ingine unashindwa yes you forgive me i'm just remembering you're told you know forgiving is very difficult my mother told me a story about forgiveness and i'll never forget i don't know what she was, she was getting to by the way i was i was i was small and she used to give us stories like all mothers do and she told me a story about two women who were living in a plot together and they had issues with one another but then they were told they were given a condition that for you to go to to heaven you must be willing to help the other person so they asked what do you mean so they were taken they were given a test they were taken to a place a room which was all locked but then they were locked inside but then they were told you cannot come out of here no you can only come out one at a time so someone went into the roof and threw a rope they were given a condition that only you can only come up one at a time so the first so the rope was sent down and then they had to agree now imagine people who have disagreed agreeing so they were told you must agree first who comes first so they argued and argued and one day ended they had been given a minimum of three days so one says you start ah, partner, how can you start before me then they start argument again because they had unforgiveness issues so finally day two came and they realized hey, 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 hey. if we don't sort it will what will happen we'll remain where so they agreed so so the rope is here but there was someone up there who was going to to pull so the first lady went started climbing then Adipofika 
hapo juu kidogo akasema hai ananiacha namna gani akamvuruta she brought her down so they started arguing now it's my turn and they kept pulling each other back until day three. no one had gone up that's how unforgiveness is and forgiveness looks like i am pulling you back but as i pull you back i don't go up and forgiveness holds us back from progress and forgiveness is like taking poison and expecting the other person to die hello it's like drinking you drink poison but you expect the other person to do what because unforgiveness hurts us more than it hurts the other person in fact some people don't even remember that they wronged you you see them you get a stomach ache then they are so happy niaye they are so happy you you are very angry but then they are so they are going scot free unforgiveness messes us up unforgiveness gets us into trouble the others are okay you are the one in trouble that's why you ask someone una kumbuka vile ulifanya lini 1999 wapi ukumbuke ai miss kumbuki my friend you've been carrying a burden for 20 years then they've been free you have been in prison you even have ulcers because you are so angry with them una muona na muona tumbo you know i see you get a stomach ache them they are so okay they can eat anything because they have forgiven and forgiveness is like holding barbed you know barbed wire you know barbed wire if you take a piece of bar, the, bar, the, the 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 sharp side forget the, the 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 long one and then you hold it like this you can play with it in your hand did you know that actually you can roll it in your hand and it won't hurt you isn't it but unforgiveness is like clenching it in your fist and then holding it tighter you're told let go you say no who is in pain you are in pain but you're expecting the other person to feel the pain and that's why we are being reminded here that forgive those that offend you set them free forgive them so let's remember the first thing tell your neighbor faith in his name abide in him forgive first john 3:22 tells us and whatever we ask we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight so we are finding first john 3:22 is about obedience now obedience is not easy obedience has to do with lordship remember we talked about lordship it's about allowing him to be lord of our lives obedience and lastly james 4:3 you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures not for gratification of those of one's passions so it should not be for great self gratification so let's let's look at it one more time so how can we really tell that we are praying according to his will we've just looked at a few principles here and first one we say tell your neighbor faith tell them in his name abide in him forgive obedience not for gratification friends let me tell you when we pray remembering that actually we are praying in his will hallelujah but the other thing is praying his word you know scripture tells us what is the will of god so you can actually pray the will of god by praying his word and lastly tell your neighbor those who are born of god don't make a practice of sinning now we find that 1 john 3 9 to 10 media take us there 1 john 3 9 to 10 tells us no one born of god makes a practice of sinning for god's seed abides in him and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of god by this it is evident who are the children of god and who are the children of the devil whoever does not practice righteousness is not of god nor is the one who does not love his brother 1 john 5 18 uh, reminds us that 1 john 5 18 we know that everyone who has been born of god does not keep on sinning but he who was born of god protects him and the evil one does not 
touch him. Now, John talks about the sin that leads to death. And this is about people who've not known Christ as their Lord and Savior. I can summarize through saying that. And there are those sins that do not lead to death. I mean, one may be a believer, but they have sin in their lives and they have to repent. But then we find, I want us to talk a little about the habitual sin. Practice of sinning. It's a practice. You keep doing it over and over again. Now we find in scripture, uh, we are told a lot about sin. And we are told there's sin and transgression. And that is missing the mark. That is missing the mark. But we find the next level is iniquity. Now iniquity is habitual sin. This is what he's talking about. The practice of sinning. You keep doing it over and over again. Habitual sins, transgressions over generations, crookedness and godliness. Now, society strongholds are premised on iniquity. It is even justified by people since it has taken root. You see, there's something we call the redeeming gift. Every society has a redeeming gift. There is what God has given every society. And when they use that gift, they excel. Praise the Lord. And there is a fatal fault. There's a certain iniquity within every society that when one gets carried away by it, then they get into a bondage and they will become free. And I like sometimes drawing an example with my own society. One of our, our fatal faults as a community is alcohol. My community, we abuse alcohol a lot. Actually, we never really preach about it on the pulpit. Did you know that? There's someone you will never hear in any pulpit, in a church predominantly by Mount Kenya people, is speaking against alcohol. True? It's a very rare sermon. So, but I don't mind digging a little and asking, what is our fatal fault? What is the sin that we may be practicing? That the devil is taking advantage and there is a stronghold amongst our people. If you review, because we have different societies, you can look through and ask yourself, as a society, what is our fatal? What is the one thing that pulls us back? But what is our redeeming gift? Our redeeming gift. Every society has a redeeming gift. As a society, there's an entrepreneurial spirit, isn't it? People start business from anything. They can start any, and somehow they make it true. When I go to my brother, Dr. Kai's place, they have a spirit of excellence. I'm telling you, excellence lives there. If someone makes for you a, your car, because there is a finesse. Praise the Lord. That is a redeeming gift. Praise Jesus. Every society has a redeeming gift. If you go to the rift, how come out of ten runners, nine come from the rift? Kwani, the other people have no legs. Yani, they can't run. It's a redeeming gift. God loves every society and he's given every society a redeeming gift gift. However, the devil is very clever. With every redeeming gift, the enemy makes sure there is a stronghold. And the stronghold is seen through the iniquity of those people. And if I look at my people, while there is an entrepreneurial spirit as a redeeming gift, we actually have the abuse of alcohol as a bondage. And this, there is actually, in fact, if you didn't know, we even have a practice, by the way. Did you know that? If you have dowry negotiation, Alcohol must be discussed. Did you know that? Do you know, Joy? They always talk about it, right? There has to be some alcohol in the discussion. If people, a child has been born, they say, ne nyuo ne amu ana. now. That means, tukunyo ni anani, ni amtoto. Are you seeing, initially it may have been simply a sin, missing the mark, but when it's abused, it then has become an iniquity. You're born, and that's what you see. And so, it's no longer seen as a wrong when abused. It's seen as a way of life. So, it has become a stronghold among our people. And it's such a serious stronghold, we don't realize. You know, I was cracking a joke the other day about other societies. Uh, like my brothers from Western, for instance. The only name I know that has to do with that is Wamalwa. In Lua is Okongo. Right? Because Congo is alcohol. Just in case you didn't know. Now you know. But now if you come to my community, my friend, we have so many names. We have Kenua, Monua, Monui, Munyi, Kahea, Keja, Nyaja. I mean, I can give you names. Even our naming system, it is entrenched. 
Bwana asifiwe sana. So the challenge is it may be there but you're not in bondage to it. Bwana asifiwe sana. Because there are things you can never change, isn't it? But the moment we get carried away and it becomes part of us and we abuse it, it's an iniquity and a stronghold. And a lot of our people are in bondage. And let me tell you, friends, we never discuss about it. And we know how it has damaged families, isn't it? So we begin with sin transgression. When it becomes iniquity, that's habitual sin. But when it becomes an abomination, then that causes disgust to God. Now we find in Genesis 15, 16, in the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here. For the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. Iniquity is one level, but wait, it becomes worse when it becomes an abomination, when it's abominable. Because we are told the sin of the Amorites and the Canaanites had not reached its full. And we are told, Leviticus tells us here, that Leviticus tells us that 1825 for the land is defiled therefore I visit the punishment of its iniquity God rarely visits the sin for you can repent and ask for forgiveness he visits the iniquity why because it's become a stronghold and the land vomits out its inhabitants when we don't address strongholds and we continue sinning then God will visit the iniquity of us and the abominations of the people and the land vomits its people they were rejected by the land before the Israelites came to wipe them out. God can wipe out families, even today. But we thank God there is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We can go to him and say, Lord, I'm standing on behalf of my family. Glory. And when we stand on behalf of our families and we cry out to God, God, he looks and he hears and he forgives our families. Praise the Lord. So there is no stronghold God cannot break. There is no sin God cannot take away. There is no immorality God cannot turn around. The only question is, will we continue allowing the practice of the sin, of the iniquity, or do we go to God and cry out and say, Dear God, my family is in trouble. What am I saying? When there is so much practice of sin, someone has to stand in the gap. And you are the one to stand in the gap. You are the one to call your family and say, I want us to pray. There is a pattern I have observed. You can tell your family. And you can pick it back. If you pick your families, you'll always see a pattern. If there's something ungodly and the enemy has been taking advantage, you can call out your family and say, let's look at the patterns. What is the enemy doing to our family? And you can call unto Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ is able to redeem our families. Praise the Lord. Nothing is impossible with the living God. Nothing is impossible with the living God. But if we do not go to the King of Kings, then that becomes a continuing pattern. Someone has to break that pattern. I want us to conclude and remember, tell your neighbor, those who are born of God, don't hate others but love them. Tell them those who are born of God, possess the Spirit of God. Tell them those who are born of God, have assurance of salvation. Those who are born of God, don't make a practice of sinning. But they go to the King of Kings and seek for redemption of their families. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you because you reminded us, even through the study of First John, that there were false teachers then, but you want us to discern truth. You want us to know your will. You want us to have markers when we pray. How can we tell you are praying in your will? What do we need to do as we connect with you, Almighty God? And now with all eyes closed, you may be here and you're saying, I am here, but I'm not born of God. I'd like to receive Jesus today. Just raise your hand wherever you are. You want to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You're saying, I want a new beginning. Just raise your hand. We'll pray together with you. Because God is able. God is able. God is able. Wherever you are. It's about you and him. Just raise your hand. I don't want to leave you out. Or maybe you're here and you're saying, I used to be born again. Or I have backslidden. I'm not walking in his will. And today I want to rededicate my life to him. Just raise your hand. I'll pray with you wherever you are. God is a God of restoration. He can restore us when we miss the mark. Just raise your hand. Wherever you are, raise your hand. Pray with you. Pray with you for rededication. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for you've spoken to us. Now, Lord, I pray 
make us priests. Help us to reach out to our families. Look at the patterns of sin, patterns of iniquity. Even, Lord, if they are abominable things that have not pleased you, help us to repent and stand in the gap for our families and set our families free. Set our families free, Lord. Set our families free. If some of our members have gone into false teachings and, Lord, they've been drawn in, help them come out of them. And, Lord, if some of our family members are bound by an iniquity that has put a hold on them, set them free, King of Glory. For you have sent us as your missionaries to our very own households. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All God people say, Amen. Are we blessed? To me, Barikiwa. And let's give the Lord a mighty hand. Amen.